Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to give another minute or two, Jess and team, just to see if others show up, but we want to welcome you and just hang on a few more seconds before we get going. All right, let's do this. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so very much for joining us today. It's really a pleasure to welcome you. Uh, my name is Christopher Canning, and I'm the Director of Research at the Waypoint Research Institute. For folks who don't know, the Waypoint Research Institute is an embedded research unit within a specialty hospital setting. We conduct research in a variety of, er variety of areas, including forensic mental health, implementation science, patient-oriented research, and child and youth mental health. The WRI, as we call ourselves, is comprised of now over 40 staff, and we're a little amazed by that because our team has grown tremendously, of staff and students, including support staff, research scientists, administrative staff, and other researchers who are with us through scholarships or academic appointments. We are gathering virtually today with participants across Ontario on the traditional land sacred to many Indigenous nations. I would like to acknowledge the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek, which includes the Odawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy, the Haudenosaunee and Wendat, the Mississauga of the Credit, the Inuit and Métis, and others on whose land our province rests. In so doing, we acknowledge and affirm our commitment to improving relationships between nations and repairing ongoing harms of colonial systems on Indigenous communities residing in the regions represented here today. So it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to our first Waypoint Talks in over two years. It's been a wild ride, as we all know. For obvious reasons, as everyone knows, the last few years shifted how we did things, and we put Waypoint Talks on pause to focus on the immediate needs of the hospital. But we are really glad to be getting these sessions back up and running again. If this is your first Waypoint Talks, welcome. If you've joined us before, we're really glad to have you back. But despite not running Waypoint Talks over the last few years, we as a team have been busier than ever. Just over a year ago, we were running about 15 projects, and now we're up to over 30. We have secured 10 new research grants over the last year, totaling more than $1.2 million. We continue to focus on securing research grants to support the work we do. And as a research unit embedded within a hospital setting, we continue to support Waypoint through various strategic implementation, evaluation, and research initiatives. Our goal continues to be building strong and lasting connections between research, practice, staff, and patients at Waypoint and beyond. And as a knowledge mobilization initiative, the goal of Waypoint Talks has typically been to share knowledge about some of the work we are doing with staff and the broader community. These sessions aim to support the uptake of research findings within and beyond our walls, and to simply share new and interesting research findings to spark dialogue. Now, today's session is a little bit different. We've designed this Waypoint Talks to be more interactive, to help others understand more about who we are, what we do, and how to conduct research. Today, you'll hear about the principles and practices of a co-design co approach to developing a preventative online mental health program for youth. You'll hear from a fantastic team who use co-design methodologies and health equity approaches to ensure this preventative program focuses on and supports the unique needs of diverse youth in the Simcoe Muskoka region and beyond. So with that said, I would like to introduce you to the Pompey team. We have our two youth leads, Sarah Farr and Megan Brush, and you'll be hearing from these folks throughout the session. I see them waving at you, there you go. We have our Knowledge Translation and Impl Implementation Coordinator, Arena Bogdan, there she is. Uh, the project's main coordinator, Dr. Kim Belfry, there you are, Kim. And the project's two principal investigators, Dr. Elnaz Mokhimi, there she is waving, and Dr. Sian Kim. Good morning, everyone. 
The project has also, also has many other collaborators and partners, including other staff within the WRI, members of Waypoint's organizational development team, and I think I see a couple of those folks on the call now, and staff from our communications team. So this project has benefited tremendously too from our community partners at the North Simcoe Youth Wellness Hub and the YMCA of Simcoe, Simcoe Muskoka. And of course, the project team, as you'll likely hear, is grateful for the multi-year funding support from the TD Ready commitment to build out, expand, and evaluate this program. This unique project has truly been a wonderful collaborative effort over the last year or so. We are so excited that you can join us today to hear about this work and reignite our knowledge sharing events over the coming years. So thanks again for joining us today. We hope that you ask lots of questions, engage as much as you can with the team and the content and help us improve what we do. So I'm gonna pass it over to the project team to get things rolling. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Christopher, for this wonderful overview of our uh, workshop series about our project and also introducing us to our wonderful audience right here. Who And thank you so much for being uh, with us today, this morning. Um, I know you are all very busy, so um, sharing your valuable time is important and very appreciated. Um, so my role uh, in this presentation is very short and sweet. So I'm here to introduce you what will be followed up and what you can expect from this workshop throughout and also give you a little more overview about how it all started. So what were we thinking when we tried to develop a preventative online mental health program and what were the three main approaches that we took and why? So after I give you this very brief overview, um, Dr. Kim Belfry will follow up and give you a more detailed information about what are the stages, processes we took to develop this program. After you hear more about how we developed the program, then our youth lead, Sarah Farr, will give you a little more descriptive information about what our program actually looks like. And also, um, Arena, our KT implementation specialist, we have privileged to have her in our team, will give you a little more information about how we incorporate other components into our program. And then um, my wonderful co-PI, Dr. Elna Mukhimi, will describe you what you can expect from this very condensed uh, experiential activity that you will be uh, participating. So this condensed session participation is a, some kind of mock uh, experience of what our first session would look like. So we thought that hearing about how we developed the program and how our program looks like will not be enough for you. So we wanted to give you the opportunity to really be in there, try it, and really experience it by yourself so you have a better understanding of our of sessions and the program. Our mock uh, session will be followed up with a mini focus group. So why we included this uh, little portion of focus group here is to give you an overview about how we plan to evaluate our program. So it is very important to really understand if our program was effective, uh, how the participant received it and perceived our program, and to gather those information to enhance our program and do better. So this is a, like a mini focus group session that we are implementing after our program to understand how we did. So you're going to be experiencing that as well. And we will be ending our presentation by a general discussion and Q&A um, portion at the end. So as you may have been bombarded with these three important <laughs> learning objectives throughout the email correspondence, uh, these are the three approaches we took uh, when we were thinking about developing a preventative program. Um, I know that you we belong to different sectors and we may have slightly different roles in our community, in our sectors. However, I believe we are all here because we are interested in um, supporting our youth. 
so they can do better in their lives in various different perspectives. So we're showing you what we did, but not to say this is the exemplary model that you should all follow, but more about sharing what we did, uh, how we did, so we can um, really do it better as a community, as a network, as a collection of all those people who are interested in supporting our use. So we're hoping that um, we can show you what we did and hear your thoughts after our uh, introduction and um, description of our program. So we can use your feedback and advice and suggestions to enhance our program further. So we took the community engagement approach because as you may all know, this type of program development and implementation cannot happen in silo. So it cannot happen within one department of one hospital uh, because it really needs our community to be engaged because we are not working alone. So we recognize that there are other mental health providers, clinicians, parents, educators, uh, researchers who are working in this topic tirelessly to support our use. And we wanted to communicate with them to see how we can do better as a team and not to uh, just impose some idea that came from a few friends. So we wanted to engage our community, the people who serve youth, who are interested in supporting mental health um, to understand what's out there, what can we do to do better and how we can support each other um, and to kind of create synergy. We also took equity, diversity, inclusion approach because we all know that our youth are very diverse in many ways and acknowledging that, embracing that, applying that important um, fact is very important to make our program successful. They can really meaningfully help support them. And we also took the co-development approach with the youth so we can embrace what their actual needs are and really address those needs in a most appropriate and comfortable format that they prefer. So we took these three approaches throughout in the program development, implementation, and evaluation. And so, uh, and you will hear more about how actually we did throughout the presentation. So um, this is, I believe, my penultimate slide to give you how it all started. So you may all know that COVID-19 really uh, impacted our youth mental health in various ways. And we are all understanding that it really made them uh, much more exposed to isolation, emotional problems, and lack of you know opportunities to engage with others, and which are very critical for their uh, development stage. So uh, as Christopher Christopher alluded at the beginning, so TD Bank uh, proposed a grant competition to really drive accelerated, sustained, and equitable recovery to COVID-19 mental health crisis, which obviously we applied and was very lucky to get the grant to have this opportunity to really do something for our community youth. So um, taking all those three important approaches that I just explained, we wanted to develop the program to really address the existing gaps. The gaps in, my, in our understanding was that no like baked cake will solve or address the actual and current needs of our youth. So we wanted to take bottom-up approach, really ask how they're experiencing, what their needs are, and how best we can support them. And we didn't intend to create a new wheel because we understand there are so many evidence-based, fabulous activities and programs out there that are already designed and implemented. So we wanted to um, put together those activities that best addresses their, our current um, use needs, uh, take the EDI approach, 
and put together a nice program so we can provide this um, evidence-based program, engage youth and connect with our community and you know support our youth effectively. So this is my last slide. Um, in general, our timeline was like last year, we developed the program and you will hear more detailed uh, story about how we developed in stages by um, Dr. Kim Belfry shortly. We are in the stage of pilot implementation in Simcoe County at the moment, it will, which will be followed up with a province-wide implementation in fall. We will be doing evaluation of our pilot programs so we can put together um, your feedback, youth feedback, everything to enhance and make modifications so we can provide a enhanced version of our program for our province use. We'll be doing some knowledge mobilization late spring next year to summer uh, to really um, make our program sustainable for use to be continued in our partner implementation partner organizations even after our project ends. Okay, so now I'm gonna pass my torch to Dr. Kim Belfry to give you a step-by-step -step introduction about how we developed the program. Um, thanks, Anne. Uh, so on our journey to create uh, this program that's co-developed for youth, um, by youth, our first committed step was um, to search the published literature on youth mental health, since um, what key areas um, themes emerged that could be roughly divided into um, psychological, physical, and social. In terms of psychological, what we noticed is that there was a general increase in feelings of anxiety, or sorry, symptoms of anxiety and depression. In terms of uh, physical, uh, we noticed that there was a reduction in um, physically physical activity, which was due in part due to the closures that were experienced during the pandemic, but also due to a general lack of motivation in many. And then last, but certainly not least, was social connectivity. And the pandemic negatively impacted um, young people's ability to connect with their peers and connect with their friends, which isn't surprising um, given the way um, things went. So um, next slide. So after looking at the literature, what was important is that we wanted to connect with um, young people between the ages of 20 to 25 um, to first and foremost, to connect with them um, through surveys and focus groups to ask them, okay, so the literature tells us this, but do you feel this way? Does this resonate with you? Is there anything we're missing? because at the time when we searched the literature, there was a general gap. So it said all these things were happening, but we didn't know, like, are they still experiencing these um, issues or, you know, are they rebounding? But in general, what we found was that, yes, young people did experience these things, you know, reduction to physical, social, and uh, psychological wellness, but also that there's been this continued um, experience. And even though we're sort of, you know, coming out of the pandemic, these feelings are still being, um, these symptoms are still being felt. So to springboard off of those um, youth findings, we wanted to uh, figure out what kind of programming preferences were most appealing to them. So we could start to go down the road of how we're going to create a program for youth and then we could go about selecting these various evidence-based pieces that met the social physical and um, psychological needs so as you can see we have a couple graphics around but um, you know some key things that really popped out was that um, the program um, should be compatible with Um, 
internet, um, um, like a Zoom delivery as many and video capability, um, that it'd be free so that there were no barriers. We had originally thought that larger group sizes would be better, but um, they communicated, you know, around 10 was a preferable group size. And that, um, you know, evening time slots between six and seven was good for them. And they wanted to see um, youth representation in the facilitators uh, when they attended these programs. So next slide. Once we had that information, the next step, as I sort of alluded to, was then to take these evidence-based pieces um, and start to program that's going to and youth engagement. And in addition, um, we connected with um, project partners um, that were connected with youth as well. So on the left, you can see um, we needed to find these components that would address uh, the youth needs. So I have it broken down into the three categories. In terms of psychological wellness, um, sorry, I just got a message that my video is lagging. I'm going to talk and continue to talk. I will say this is my last slide, so it uh, it won't be prolonged. Um, so in terms of psychological, this meant um, activities that included self-regulation, um, boosting self-esteem, um, the setting and meeting of sustainable goals. And for our physical wellness theme, it meant providing access to services where youth could engage in uh, physical activity and we could promote um, uh, we could promote you know physical movement and um, encourage this. And then lastly, in terms of social wellness, um, to provide a vehicle for young people to connect both during the program and um, in the time in between programs. Um, and then the second being, uh, we wanted to ensure that EDI was interwoven into our program components. And for us, this meant um, we connected with the youth as well on these, you know, things like, um, Encouraging uh, the use of pronouns if the participants felt comfortable, um, allowing them to use their preferred names, um, including things like land acknowledgements, and creating safe spaces where there could be free sharing um, and just providing um, accessibility of the materials and providing a, um, a space for youth voices. Thanks so much. Um, and I'm just going to hand it off. All right, perfect. Thank you, Kim, for kind of the overview. Um, so now that you guys kind of have an idea of what the development of Pompey looked like, um, I'll get into what Pompey actually is. Um, so the program's key elements are it's a well-being program for youth aged 12 to 25. Um, the perks include a free six-week um, Simcoe Muskoka YMCA membership. You can get community service hours for participating. And then there's also a Pompey certificate of completion. Um, so as Kim kind of mentioned, our focus for this program was physical, social, and uh, mental well-being. Um, the program includes six live one-hour weekly group sessions led by youth facilitators. And then for in between those sessions, um, there are uh, self-guided wellness activities we give them, um, and as well as a asynchronous peer messaging board they have access to should they just use it. So as I briefly mentioned, one of those perks uh, for the pilot program is a six-week Simcoe Muskoka YMCA membership. Uh, this is going to be valid at the Midland, Collingwood, Innisfil, Ravenhurst, and Wasega Beach locations. Um, now, during scale-up, we hope to um, offer a group orientation hosted by the Y. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I step foot in the gym, half of the equipment there looks more like alien technology. So what we'd, we'd really like to do is offer an orientation to get them um, access to a tour of the facility, um, an introduction to safe exercise. And that also speaks to kind of the social well-being piece because uh, it's a great opportunity for participants to um, meet up and connect in person. 
um, these memberships become active during week two. And of course, uh, this wouldn't be possible without our partnership with the Go Muskoka YMCA. Bringing it back to our, oh, sorry, just back just a little bit. Um, bringing it back to our learning objective of fostering community engagement, we were able to improve our program because of our relationship with the YMCA. This mutually beneficial partnership meant that we could meet our goal of fostering physical well being for participants while also bringing in engagement for the YMCA. Next slide, please. <laughs> Alrighty, now that you're more familiar with Pompey as a whole, I'll give you a quick rundown of each of the six sessions. We start off with session one, Affirming the Beat. Um, this one is all about positive affirmations and using music to improve the way we talk to and feel about ourselves. We go over the, facts, the effects of positive versus negative self-talk. And for our activity, um, we have participants collaborate to create a positive affirmation playlist, which we share with them and then incorporate into future sessions. And moving on to session two, Bodies in Motion. This one is all about physical wellness. Um, we get participants up and moving in our mindfulness activity, and then we explore the Canadian 24-hour movement guidelines and the benefits of increasing your activity levels. For our session activity, we use Mentimeter, um, more on that later, uh, to have an open, judgment-free discussion about our own personal habits, uh, challenges, and motivations surrounding physical activity, and we brainstorm different ways we can increase and incorporate uh, it into our own individual lifestyles. This is also the week that YMCA memberships become active, so they're able to take what they've learned in session and apply it. Um, session three, Balanced Bodies and Minds, is all about evaluating our physical and emotional states. Uh, in this session, we explore the connection between our physical and emotional states using a tool called the Thayer Matrix. Um, for our activity, we practice using this tool to pinpoint our energy and tension levels. Now, um, session four, we actually have two different versions for session four. And when participants sign up for the program, um, they're asked to indicate their preference for either a creative or culinary activity. And the popular uh, vote determines which version of session four we do. Uh, for the artistic version, Creative Minds, uh, we explore art as a tool for mindfulness. So in this session, participants use the art kit we send them um, to practice Zen Tangle. Um, in this guided activity, which is essentially an art meditation, participants are encouraged to allow their mind and body to express itself through patterns and colors. Um, as we go through, participants form uh, their own unique mindfulness mosaic. It's really fun seeing what they come up with. I love that session. Um, we also have a culinary version, um, Food for Thought. Um, this one is all about mindful eating. Um, and we explore food literacy and the different factors that make up a healthy diet, noting individual differences and limitations, kind of similar to how we did um, with physical activity in session two. Um, in, this, uh, in this session, we go through a guided mindfulness eating practice, um, and then participants can take the free culinary kit we send them um, and use it outside of session to create uh, either one of the recipes we provide or they can go crazy and take their own spin on it. Then moving on to session five, finding your center. This one's all about self-regulation. Um, we expand on the concepts we explored in session three, focusing on the self-regulation and ways to achieve it. And our activity um, in this session is a guided humming and then Qigong practice. And then um, of course, last but not least, session six, dream, plan, do is our final session. Um, and so we do a little bit of a recap on the program as a whole um, and discuss strategies for using the techniques and skills learned over the course of the program outside of the program. Um, in this session, we use a goal planning worksheet um, to create sustainable goals that promote overall well-being beyond Pompey. And with that, I will hand things over to Arena to go over our website and summer pilot. Great. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, so yeah, you can find most of the information presented here today on our website. You can visit us by going to ouryouthwellbeing.com or you can scan the QR code that you see on screen. And on our website, you'll find promotional material, information about Pompey, our team, updates, upcoming events, a whole lot more. 
And since youth noted a preference for electronic materials, participants can also log on through the participant portal to access uh, workbooks, slides, messaging boards, wellness resources, all that good stuff. Um, what's really fun about this website is that it was actually developed and tested by youth. Um, and we incorporated a whole lot of their feedback in the website. So for example, it was important for youth that our website be accessible. So we chose color combinations, contrast and colors, that kind of thing to make sure that it is accessible. Um, they wanted diversity in images. So we made sure to find images that are representative of Ontario youth. We used plain language throughout the entire website to make sure that anyone would feel comfy and welcome. And we've even optimized the website for desktop and mobile browsing since a lot of youth tend to access materials on their phone anyway. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and a little bit of a shameless self-promotion here, but youth can also sign up for Pompey through our website because right now we are piloting in the Simcoe Muskoka uh, region. Um, so our goal is to recruit around 25 to 50 participants with about five to 15 youth per group. Um, the reason we chose these smaller groups again is A, because it's preferred by youth. That is what they said they wanted. And B, it just allows for easier relationship building, more fulsome discussions uh, during the sessions, that kind of thing. And we're gonna evaluate this pilot run using surveys and focus group discussions. And to show our commitment to equity and co-design principles, we are also offering up to $90 in uh, compensation for youth feedback. And this feedback is gonna be used to optimize Pompey and prepare for um, provincial rollout later this fall, which is super exciting. So with that, I will pass it off to Elnaz to talk about our workshop activity. Awesome. So um, we actually have a condensed version of our first program session to really give you a sense of what our program is about, give you an introduction, um, and to really see the stages um, that were incorporated and the goals that we incorporated in order to bring this program to fruition. Um, our program is going to be facilitated by our actual youth facilitators, Sarah, Megan, and Arena. Um, so you will be put into different breakout rooms um, to get that small group experience as well. All right. Um, and then as you go through the sessions, we'd just like you to know uh, a few things. Just keep them in the back of your mind because we will discuss them once you come back. Um, we'd like you to focus on how equity, diversity, and inclusion were addressed or not if you felt that was the case. Your thoughts about including youth uh, facilitators, our co-development approaches, as well as our community engagement, and then also how the sessions address well-being in youth. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go into breakout rooms uh, now. Um, it'll take 30 minutes um, for the condensed session. Our usual sessions are one hour in length, but obviously for the purpose of time, we had to keep it short. Um, and then once you're back, we'll continue the workshop. Okay, so everyone should be back now. Um, and we really do hope that you enjoyed the session and we're able to get a sense of what our program is about. Um, and now we know that an important part of implementing the program is also evaluating it. So to do this, we use focus groups as part of our evaluation strategy to really get a good sense of how we can improve the program. And what we aim to capture from our participants were several things. We wanted to capture their expectations going into the program, their opinions on the program, their thoughts about facilitation, 
their experiences with the program, as well as any um, additional feedback. So this was really the space for them to be able to share their thoughts and opinions. And the reason why we um, brought focus groups in as a big part of our evaluation strategy was it gives a voice to our target population. It facilitates learning and knowledge sharing. It identifies areas of improvement. And all of this is really important to enhance program efficacy and accessibility, given that we want to scale the program province wide. Um, like every other part of our program, we engaged youth um, in our evaluation strategy as well. So our youth team members were actually heavily involved in our focus group development, um, which is quite a benefit when you have a generation difference as a researcher with your target population. It's good to get insight from the experts, um, especially when you want to capture things like feedback and opinions. So some of the um, feedback that we did get from our youth team members was to use Mentimeter. So this was to enhance engagement with the TikTok generation and you know slower or smaller attention spans. This was really a good way to get our um, participants excited about um, the focus groups, especially because they're an hour and a half in length. Um, all of our slides were designed and vetted by our youth team members. Um, as well, we have youth facilitators who take the lead in um, our focus groups, and then I would come in as a co-facilitator to build that rapport, to bring that sense of familiarity, and for our youth participants to really feel represented in the program that is completely geared towards them. So um, our discussion today, in the same way that we had a condensed session, we also created a condensed focus group for you to really get a sense of the kinds of questions that we ask. Um, I am going to note that we um, opted to have more of the interactive questions for our mini focus group today. We won't be probing as much, um, obviously for the purpose of time. Um, the other thing to note is that Sarah will be leading our facilitation today, um, but under normal circumstances and in our actual focus group, the person who leads the session would not be the person who leads our focus group for, various, um, for very obvious reasons. Um, because a part of our focus group also focuses on uh, the opinions on facilitators. Um, but for today's presentation, we hope you can forgive us, but Sarah will be taking the lead. So you get a sense of what it's like for our youth team members to take the lead in these important aspects of our um, program development. So what we'll ask you to do is if you can use your phone to scan the QR code, or you can go on the website and enter your uh, the code that you see on the screen, and you'll be able to access Mentimeter. Um, and that's going to be our virtual platform uh, to run the focus group. So I'm just going to pop onto our Mentimeter. Just give me a few seconds to open it up. If you are having trouble with the code, it might be because I prematurely put it in um, until she uh, um, opens it, it uh, might not be showing as valid. So maybe give it another try now that Elmas has opened it. <laughs> Sorry about the trouble. Um, actually, the, the code refreshed. So if you look at the top of the screen, it's a different one, 39006245. All right, I'll drop that in the chat because we want the correct code in the chat. <laughs> yeah, my apologies for that. That was not updated. <laughs> Sorry. Just going to put it in presentation mode again.
Okay. Hopefully everybody sees it. And if you don't, you can just send us a message and we'll try to get that fixed. All right, Sarah, it's all yours. All right. So hello to um, my the people who were in my mini group and hello to the new people. Um, before we go into our questions, of course, we want to emphasize how important it is for us to hear your thoughts and opinions. And there's a lot of ways you can share them. Um, but uh, for the most part, you can unmute your mic and speak up in the group. Anywhere you anywhere you see the term deep discussion on the slide, um, that's basically us prompting you to unmute and discuss your answers. You'll also see different types of questions like multiple choice. Um, after submitting your response to these questions, please unmute and participate in our deep discussions here too. Um, by sharing your ideas out loud, we can have some exciting conversations and learn from each other. Your feedback is, of course, incredibly valuable to us, and it helps us make our program better. So don't hesitate to share your thoughts and let your voice be heard. Alrighty. Perfect. All right, so with that, we'll get started. Hopefully everyone's logged in okay, but again, if not, just shoot us a message. Um, so to start off, in one or two words, before joining the session, what did you hope to learn for, learn or gain, if anything? More about the program. Benefits of co-design, best practices, youth perspective, EDI. All right, we're getting a lot. For those of you who are comfortable sharing, um, why were these kinds of things important to you? Um, if I'll say just, um, I feel that there's so many troubled youth at this point that it's just nice to be able to find a way to be able to communicate better and um, help them to move forward in, in a positive way. Thank you so much. As part of my role, um, I deliver youth programming and I am specifically finding difficulty with sort of low motivation of youth right now and um, the lack of connection um, that we experience in program. And so I'm just looking for, um, you know, better ways or more effective ways to connect and engage with youth meaningfully. Absolutely, Chantal. It can be, it can be really tricky, um, especially during the summer to kind of find ways to connect and really um, effectively reach out. So 100%. I'm also seeing in the chat, um, uh, improving your skills and your role and continuing to learn ways to help youth. Absolutely. And Rachel says mental health is a top priority, um, 100%. I think that's, that's why we're all here today. So. Alrighty. I think um, Al Nas, unless you have anything to add, we can head on over to the next question. All right. And what were your overall thoughts about the session? Again, you can be completely honest. Um, don't worry. <laughs> we take no offense. <laughs> Yeah, I, know that. I just have one thought that um, there's made uh, over overall, if I may, uh, excellent presentation. Uh, this is great information. I'm, I'm learning a lot. It's wonderful to be uh, to be part of this. Uh, there is mention at the start of a focus on evidence based um, programs and services that were focused on in the literature review. 
The problem, if I may, of evidence-based information is that it tends to be quantitatively oriented. Uh, the surveys or the measuring instruments are quantitative, quantitatively based. However, when we're dealing with psychosocial uh, mental health issues, it's very much or often at times, not always, but often at times psychosocial base, uh, if you want to tie in the biopsychosocial model, for example. In other words, a limitation of an evidence-based focus is that it may not capture programs and services which may in fact be effective but have not been measured quantitatively. Uh, I think we, we, I, we all need to keep that in mind to maybe be cautious in, in um, indicating our reliance on evidence-based data because there certainly is limitations. I think that's a very valid point. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Um, this is Ashley. I, I want to say that I really enjoyed uh, hearing about the program that, that you've developed. I think it's a really great uh, initiative and, and I hope that it does scale up. I think I'll be honest, uh, if I'm honest, I, I'm a little, uh, the, what I was hoping to hear a little more of is some of the EDI and the uh, equity elements that you incorporated into the development of this, because that wasn't really crystal clear when you kind of walked through the, the process today, and a little bit more about how, um, you know, the co-production principles and the co-design principles were really, really embedded in the development. Because again, I heard a lot of engagement, but I'm not sure I heard really all those principles underlying it. So I think it's just a little bit more from a um, understanding how this developed and how those principles uh, of co-design, co-production, and EDI were really embedded throughout. Okay, thank you, Ashley. That's a very valid point. Um... Alrighty. Um, with that, I think we can head on over to the next question. What were your general impressions of the session content, color and design of the session slides and materials, uh, session activities, the mindfulness practice, and the uh, kind of background information behind the program? Okay. For those of you who gave kind of high ratings, what were some of the ratings? What were some of the reasons you uh, rated it so high? Or if you gave lower ratings, um, what? Uh, what made you uh, kind of give the lower ratings, Kara? Sorry, trying to figure out the emojis there. I was accidentally waving instead of raising my hand. But I was going to say I gave high ratings for the activities, the session activities and mindfulness practice, because I thought that they were really um, accessible. The facilitation was really like engaging. Um, and I think that, yeah, that those would be a nice entry point um, for, for using these sessions. Thank you. I'm seeing in the chat simple and plain language. Um, I really liked how each session focuses on a different aspect and love the access to the YMCA. Yeah, it's been really great that we've been able to have that partnership. Um, Dr. Wilson? Um, yeah, I concur. The, the idea of the icebreaker, uh, how, how good that is in sessions to help people feel more relaxed and make the sessions more human, so to speak. Um, so that's, that's a great idea. Okay, thank you. Any other general impressions before we move on? Ah, shout out to Arena. Rachel says you're a great facilitator. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Alrighty, we'll head on over to the next question. And rate your overall satisfaction with the facilitation. 
again, it's a, I understand it's a little intimidating, but please be open, honest. I'm a tough cookie. <laughs> We're all tough cookies. <laughs> And yeah, again, in a normal situation, the facilitators would not also be facilitating the focus group. <laughs> Feel free to share also, like maybe in the chat, um, just based on your rating, what would what makes a good facilitator in your opinion? Because of course we also want to hear um, your thoughts and opinions on that. What makes a good facilitator? I can speak for you, Sarah, because you were in our group and facilitating this. You affirm what other people contribute to the session and you say thank you for what people are offering. And that goes a long ways, I think, because I think everyone has something to contribute, maybe nervous, bringing stuff in that they're not quite sure where it will land. And you did a, an amazing job just saying thank you. I hear that and I appreciate that. Thank you for that feedback. Melissa, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I was with Megan um, and it was her first time. She just uh, started with the program. So I just wanted to say you did a great job. I've um, presented uh, groups and I've presented to colleagues and it is infinitely harder to present to colleagues. Um, so you did a great job. Thank you so much. We're very lucky to have Megan. She's a star. Hopped right on and got right on with it. So perfect. Um, and I guess, um, last but not least, how would you say facilitation can be improved, if at all? So yeah, I just wanted to share with the group that um, at the beginning, uh, we were not too sure who should be facilitating. We thought, you know, those people who developed the program, you know, maybe researchers or trained facilitators or clinicians could be the facilitators. But when we surveyed our youth and talked with our youth, they didn't like us. They didn't like older people. <laughs> like they 100%, everyone said that we need a youth facilitator who are at the same level in terms of age and experience to be more relatable. And so they feel more comfortable relating and participating in the program. So, and now that I see it, we were not adolescents in this group, but I believe that the language that you use and the way you communicate with the, the participants, the way you you know, express your opinions and endorse everyone's feedback. It's so at the level of adolescence. And I think I understand now why they preferred younger <laughs> youth facilitator. And I think it works wonderful. Perfect. Thank you, everyone, for your feedback. We'll head on over to the next question. Um. In one or two words, after joining the session, what did you uh, learn or gain? Knowledge of the program, community connections. Power of positivity. We're getting a lot of good answers here. Yeah, I like the new playlist songs. Positive vibes. Already, and perhaps we'll move on over to the next question. Uh, 
Uh, what parts of your identity do you think may have affected your participation in the session? You can also DM us if you're not comfortable like sharing on the Mentimeter. Um, we're always open to different feedback. Age. It is, of course, a youth program, so that is um, going to take into play. For those of you who, who are saying something not listed there, again, if you're comfortable, you are welcome to um, message us and let us know. <laughs> Kelly says I'm old, LOL. <laughs> oh, Kelly, no, I don't think so. Everyone's welcome here. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Wilson, I see your hand is up. Yeah, just a thought on the issue of age. Um, I know I can understand the comment, youth interacting with youth as perhaps the possibly the best way, but not. I, I don't think in all instances. There is a need, I think, for intergenerational programming whereby youth can learn from youth, of course, but also uh, older individuals can learn from youth and youth uh, having opportunity to learn from older individuals. Um, I think that's important. Absolutely. It's kind of a mutual exchange, 100%. All right, folks, we'll head on over to the next question. And how was your overall experience with today's mini focus group? It's our last question for the day. <laughs> Neutral, it was good. All right, and um, did you guys like having the Mentimeter or would you have preferred it to just be kind of a discussion style? Christopher says, love the Mentimeter. Okay, we're getting a lot of good thumbs up about Mentimeter. Mentimeter is great for shy folks. We love it because it's kind of um, anonymous and we found um, the youth really like engaging with it as well um, because of that. And so, um, yeah, we really like to incorporate it in our program when we can. Um, we're glad you guys feel the same way. With that, that is all we have for our focus group today. Um, you are welcome to share any other comments, feedback, any of that. Um, and of course, feel free to email us at uh, our youth wellbeing at waypointcenter.ca if you have any final thoughts after, um, after leaving today. Um, but we thank you for taking the time to give your feedback and kind of discuss with us. So I'm just going to switch back to our presentation to just end it off. Um, if you can just give me a few seconds. And then I can go back. Does everybody see the screen? You can just like put up a thumbs up. There we go. All right, so we are looking for recruitment uh, partners for Pompey. So what this means is that you would be recruiting youth participants. You would promote Pompey throughout your networks and bring Pompey to your youth focus organization as well. So what we provide is Pompey, of course, as a whole. We also uh, will provide promotional materials such as recruitment flyers, infographics, 
We also will be providing you facilitator training and including materials and resources for that as well. And of course, admin support for program implementation, which includes you know, participant communication, e-gift cards, program evaluation, and you would have access to our youthwellbeing.com as well. So this is kind of just an example of our accessible brochure. Um, these can be found on Pompey's website under program materials and then Pompey infographics. So there we have, you know, layouts of our uh, sessions for our website and for youth recruitment as well. Thank you, Megan. Um, so we, I think we're on time and I see a lot of people appreciating this uh, workshop with all, your, all of you this morning. I really, I, we also appreciate your participation, constructive feedback, suggestions, advices, um, and all of your positive feedbacks as well. And thank you so much for engaging with us this morning in this program, for your interest, and we will keep contact with you, be connected through our emails. We'll be sharing with you some of those um, snapshots and some kind of summaries or takeaway from this uh, session today. Um, so we really appreciate your feedback. So if you have any other questions or additional suggestions, please feel free to email us and we'll be re re reciprocating that. <laughs> Um, contact by looping you in uh, to our program so we can work together in the future as well. So this was not something that, you know, we were presenting for you to kind of take in just uh, blindly, but it was more about communication, about sharing, and about, you know, understanding each other, what we're doing, what you are anticipating to do, and how we can work together um, as a team. So thank you so much, and uh, I will pass it to Christopher to close the session and to give you a little more information about our next workshops that follows. Yeah, thanks, Soyan, and thank you to everyone on the team. I see a lot of nice comments coming in saying how much they appreciate the session and how much the team appreciates that feedback. And um, I also thoroughly enjoyed it. I particularly liked our breakout group and the mindfulness session that I did with Sarah. Um, and I'm curious to hear how all the others went. So thank you for joining us today. Um, as Sian said, this is the first of many Waypoint talks that are going to get back up and running again. Uh, more information to follow, but we're likely to going to have one in the early fall. And you'll hear from our team on that. And we appreciate you taking the time to meet with us today. Uh, before I leave you today or before we leave the team, I would also like to thank uh, the folks in the background doing a lot of the organizational work. So Jessica Kasten, who is the Waypoint Research Institute logo there, uh, along with Arena and the team have done a lot of work putting this together. Uh, and we did it in a very short time. We decided just a few weeks ago that we would get these sessions up and running again. Uh, and we hustled to get this together and the team really pulled through and the, and the, the uh, admin team did as well. So we're really, really grateful for those efforts. And I'm genuinely pleased with the interaction here today, folks. I think we have an opportunity um, as a team at Waypoint in all the work that we do to share information. But what I like through the, some of the conversations is that we have an opportunity to partner and to build on each other's work. We should not be going at this alone. Uh, and we would love to work with all of you in the region and beyond in the work that you're doing to support the mental health of young people uh, and even on other research projects. So these sessions are really good in that way for us to all work together and learn from each other. So congratulations to the team to for their development of this program and a fantastic session today. Uh, and thank you everyone for your time and for being here today. And we shall see you in a few months. Watch for a notification. You'll get a few emails and you'll hear about next session. So take care. Hi guys, thank you so much.